This content is brought to you in part by Real Marketing, the only marketing firm recommended exclusively by the Institute. Real Marketing utilizes over 25 years of expertise and their products are built and customized for you to dominate any neighborhood, anywhere. Go to realmarketing4u.com. That's realmarketing4u.com. Also, look for past A State of Mind episodes with CEO David Collins as our guest. Kayla, thank you so much for taking the time to um, uh, to spend uh, a little visit with us and, and share with our members. We're so glad to have you. Um, take a moment and uh, introduce yourself, if you would. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your market area. Sure. And thank you, Tammy, for having me. And uh, I'm here locally in the beautiful, sunny Sarasota, Florida market. And we sell the Barrier Island, Sarasota, Lakewood Ranch. Siesta Key, which is really well known. So that's where we're at. Excellent. Excellent. And um, how did you come to be where you are? Tell us about your background. Sure. Well, in uh, a brief synopsis, I finished college in, two, uh, hold on, <laughs> 2001. Okay. And I had to think for a second because, you know, it's been some time and I moseyed on down here uh, right after that. And I, I really didn't know anything about Sarasota. The reason I came here was I had family here. My younger brother was here at the Ring Lane World Famous uh, Art College. And so that's what really brought me down here and just packed up my car and came on down just young and dumb, you know. (laughs) So I just really knew nothing about Sarasota. I just figured I would love it. And, you know, my brother was already here. So I've been here ever since. Excellent. Um, And you came from Wisconsin, right? Correct. Stevens Point, which is a college town. I went to UW Stevens Point and it's about most people know Madison or Milwaukee. It's about an hour and a half, two hours from either city. So excellent. And so I know from your bio that um, that you got degrees in both business and French, but that you're also fluent in Turkish. Is that correct? It is. I know that's an odd thing to throw out there, but Yes, my degree is in business administration with an international emphasis. I really didn't have my sights on any particular career, you know, when I landed on that uh, degree, but I was always in French. So I took French through high school. And of course, I decided to minor in French. And I'm so glad because I really actually utilize my French and of course, my business. Uh, where the Turkish comes in, my mom's Turkish. She's born and raised in Istanbul, and she came to the United States when she was 18. So we grew up with a lot of uh, that language in the household, and so that's where that comes about. <laughs> Excellent. And I imagine that you have uh, quite a lot of uh, international and multicultural clients in the Sarasota area. We do. We have, uh, of course, you know, our neighbor, Canada. So we're seeing now an influx of Canadians come in because, of course, now the borders have been open for a while. And as we this training is in January here, 2022. Um, So that's nice to see. We're also still seeing Canadians sell. So I get to speak a little French with them. And I would say we do see like you, I'm sure, Tammy, in your market, uh, Germans and English people. So we welcome all of them. I think that we're going to have some influx this year. We shall see. Excellent. I think you're right. Um, What types of properties do you typically work with? I know there's a lot of, uh, on the barrier islands, there's uh, quite a lot of um, uh, condos, particularly those that can be used for vacation. Uh, But inland, you've got single family properties as well. And so what kind of properties do you like to work with the most and and really maybe represent the, the largest part of your business? Definitely the barrier islands, more specifically Longboat Key, but, you know, they all kind of run together. So Anna Maria is just the northern neighbor of Longboat Key. So, of course, Anna Maria and then right because you have to go off the mainland to the bridges anyway and past Bird Key and Lido Key. So really all of that's interconnected, intertwined, definitely Siesta Key, really all of the mainland of Sarasota 
as well as Lakewood Ranch, which is a very, very large master plan community. It's great for a lot of different types of buyers, I will say. So it's just, um, it's got something for everybody. And of course, Bradenton, I definitely don't sell in bad areas. So I, you know, because I want to end up listing it, I want to sell your property. So I really always advise neighborhoods. And of course, there's, there's parts of every city that you just don't advise. So, but that's in a, in a nutshell. And of course, Casey Key and then further south, Manasota Key too. Yeah, especially if somebody's buying as a, a, a second home, something that they're not in all the time. Um, I can imagine that your your knowledge of the neighborhoods and resale value and um, and and those types of things comes in really handy. Oh, gosh. I mean, there's so... Like even just taking Longbow, I mean, I, I've got some listings out there now and there's a great um, condo on the beach. I love the beachfront. Of course, who doesn't want to like, you know, list a beachfront beautiful condo? So there's so many intricacies with those buildings between the HOA fees and assessments and like the buildings themselves that are older and just being able to navigate through a lot of challenging questions that might be really, really difficult for someone newer. I mean, so when you've got a veteran agent who can just rattle it off, I think the client's going to feel so much more comfortable and just you're so much you know, more knowledgeable. That's huge for sure. Absolutely. And so tell us about um, your team or your support staff. Um, I know you do a, a lot of business. So uh, how many folks do you have that you that you call on? Girl, just one. It's me and I have a full-time director of operations and her name may or may not also be Shayla, not to be confusing. We spell it a little differently and thankfully she has a different last name, but she's been with me for about five years. And if we can't handle something or if we're double booked, we do have a couple of other agents in the office that we refer to. So loosely, that would be like the team. But she's been with me full time for that period of time. And it's just really great. We work really well together. And she sh- does show a little bit of property and she accompanies, you know, the Lister company for showings and whatnot and so much more. <laughs> and what are the odds of uh, having a name that's pronounced uh, the same, even if it's spelled differently, right? Zero percent, right. I guess, right? Well, <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the unicorn <laughs> effect, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> The sales so are here. Yep. We 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 talked about the the international influence, but tell us about um, the the overall makeup of uh, the buyers in particular that you typically work with. Um, are they mostly from out of town, whether it's international or elsewhere in the country, or um, are they local or combination? Give us a sense of uh, uh, of where your buyers are coming from. Sure, absolutely. Well, thankfully, we have a lot of repeat clients who have already been established here. So that's amazing. And I think that sometimes we just oftentimes forget about the Florida um, relocation or even just relocating like on the same island even. So people will tend to find an island, say Longboat Key, and then they'll move around on the island. And so they, because they love it so much, and then, you know, their life changes in some way. And so they're like, okay, we need to upgrade or downsize. I'm here for it. (laughs) Um, So that is awesome. And they know me and we have that relationship. And of course, outside of that, definitely a lot from Ohio, the Midwest, Indiana, um, Wisconsin. And I think in the last couple of years, I don't think I've talked to so many this many Californians, um, they're coming here. They, I mean, what's not to like, right? So definitely way more Californians than I ever have in the past. I'm figuring they're, they're finally catching up to us over here. So, and definitely some New York, Pennsylvania, I feel like the New York side tends to go to like more East coast, but we definitely, we still have that here. Uh, I don't, for some reason they follow the geographic lines down the state or something, <laughs> So um, we welcome all of that and love it. So Yeah, I, I find the same thing to be true. And I think a lot of it has to do with the pace of our different coasts sure. on Florida in particular. Uh, it kind of tracks up that ge- 
geographic line of the pace that they're they're used to. Um, and I love in your bio you talk about uh, when you're working with Snowbird clients that um, that that you're a pro when it comes to working virtually. And and I think that was even before the pandemic influence. And I love the quote: "Rest assured, you'll never need to hop on a plane if not preferred." So do you do a lot in terms of uh, virtual work with clients that you never actually see physically during the process? I've dealt with sellers virtually and buyers both. So perfect example, because this is most recent. So I've got this listing on Longbow Key in the Players Club, if anyone's interested. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so all of the showings so far in the last, I would say, three days, every single showing has been virtual. So even though that is the case, I still accompany and we kind of oversee it. That way we can rattle off answers to questions. Uh, and then another one, we have a listing coming up where I'm representing the seller first. And we already have three buyers, all virtual showings lined up for like two weeks out. So we're so excited about that. I mean, it's so convenient. And if people already know the community, especially they're more comfortable and they're able to purchase pretty easily, especially if they know you and they're comfortable with you too. Sure. I'm finding any more that, um, that out-of-town buyers... Since we don't have a lot of inventory, they'll come for a visit and and get to know the place, and they'll figure out what buildings they're they they like or neighborhoods they like, and then it's much easier to manage that virtually when the actual property becomes available. So exactly. think about think about those those clients that come to you from out of town if they're not repeat. Um, how are they finding you? Are they finding you from your direct marketing or other agents referrals? I have a lot of different avenues of where I get my business. So lots and lots of referrals from current and past clients. I feel like those are just gold. Like they're just so priceless. And I do get quite a bit from my website. And a lot of the people are coming via YouTube now. And then I direct them to my website. I also really, really love and I appreciate so much... uh, out of state or even out of area agents that refer, I mean, those are huge. I mean, I just closed the house on Siesta Key and I actually got both sides, um, found the buyer. That was because an agent in Maui found me and, you know, it was looked me up and really we talked in great detail and trusted me. And so those are huge. I probably get two to three like that per month and I just appreciate them so much. Do you have a strategy for um, connecting with those other agents in other markets or are they, they finding you organically because of your, your presence? I mean, some, so like that last one I mentioned, she just found me online. I didn't know her before. And that's kind of not uncommon for me for whatever reason, but I do have a follow-up campaign. I don't, I mean, once a month. So I have my database of just my regular clients and everybody pretty much in my phone and, you know, those agents are included. So we definitely have proactively expanded that list of agents. And because I really didn't necessarily tap into that in the past, but now we're like, you know, over the past six months, really very consciously tapping into that resource and just again just so they hear from us and they know kind of where we're at in the market what our market looks like and they have some familiarity with me too so and then vice versa you know i mean i will say we get a lot of them coming here you know versus out they all want to stay here but you know i always reciprocate whenever possible Sure, sure. And I have been uh, delighted to receive referrals from you as well, yes. as we're just a, a, a little step away. But your mm-hmm. your last comments are a perfect opportunity for me to ask, what kinds of shifts have you made in your strategy to build business in these changing times with them, um, you know, that started with travel restrictions, but is impacted by lack of inventory, um, so you mentioned that you're, you're working your database a little bit more. Is there anything else that you have, um, that you have consciously shifted in your strategy? Yeah. So we've had, um, the mailers and the website and all that. We just really ramped up the mailers to touch more people. And the biggest probably shift has been the YouTube page. So we're really per- trying to provide really high quality, relevant, informative, fun, data 
you know, that's relative to the real estate market and try to bring in guests. It's not just me all the time. And then we also incorporate one time a month, one locally owned uh, business because I'm, I love being able to give back to the community in that way and support small business. And so we do that. And then of course, I try to promote my the loves of my life doggies. Okay. So we just had the humane society on there. So we, it's fun and they appreciate it. And of course it's complimentary and it brings, you know, something a little bit of a variety while still being like more obviously in the real estate realm of things. So we're having fun with it. We do twice a week and we post on Tuesdays and Thursdays and, you know, we're making it fun and it's, it's, it's fun and it's informative, hopefully. (laughs) Yeah, I I definitely took notice of your all things dogs um, uh, <laughs> channel on your 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 YouTube, and um, what I have found is there's a lot of real estate professionals who have really capitalized on on that kind of a personal passion to, and especially since we have the the option to to use video, but think about how mm-hmm. important it is for for a dog owner to feel comfortable that they are coming to a dog friendly environment. And so totally. Yeah. Tell us about the kinds of um, the kinds of fun favorites that you've done in your video series. Oh gosh. I have fun just actually interviewing almost people, but we try to have it light and just, there's no script. And I, one of them that stands out was, I know this like sounds boring, but talking to a roofer and actually I was like, Oh, I'm like not really excited to talk to a roofer, but then I get there and he was like talking about all the charitable work that their company does. And it just like grabbed my heart. And I was like, Oh my gosh, it was so sweet. And we, Shayla and I were just so excited to do it. And we were just like, Oh my gosh, it was like heartwarming. And we just felt good about being able to put that out there and be able to promote his business. So that was really cool. I know it sounds like, you know, besides the dogs, of course, that was fun also. (laughs) So you just gave me a clue to a question that I've been wanting to ask because um, your videos are really great. And it's obvious that you are not doing the, 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 the selfie, (laughs) um, uh, cell phone video. And so does Shayla actually shoot your videos or do you use a crew or any, any sorts of professionals for that? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so embarrassed to look at the, the first videos I did. I don't even want to pretend that they exist. Cause I'm like, no, let's ignore that. But yeah, we, it's nothing fancy. We actually just, um, Shayla records it on her phone and we finally got these microphones. I mean, it's not even a big, a big production. We joke about it. We're like, okay, Netflix is going to call us, you know? Um, but the, the sound quality is getting better and, you know, we're actually looking to get it even more, uh, better quality if we can, cause sometimes when it's windy outside and whatever, but yeah, it's just simple. And then we learned how to edit just everything is really from the phone. And so right now we're just kind of, it's kind of a big learning curve. YouTube is hard. So it's difficult, but it's fun. Like I said, well, Hats off to both of you because um, they look absolutely <laughs> professionally done. And so do you do your own editing? Yes, we do everything. <laughs> we do everything. I don't know what we're doing really, but we're trying to, I, I kind of started following some of these podcasts to really try to figure out making sure we're doing things that are optimizing the channel and everything and, and, and being able to be found so that people want to, you know, that are looking for us can find us. Okay, so you're speaking a little Greek to me and probably to some of the, yeah. the, the audience. <laughs> so tell us about how you optimize so that um, so that you are found. And obviously it's working because people are finding you directly. And I, I think a lot of it is as a result of these videos. So uh, what are you doing to optimize your reach? Well, we haven't done any advertising until like this last week. We just put out one ad. So leading up to that, we didn't do any ads. Uh, but I think like putting keywords in there and then tagging and the the million dollar question is like, what keywords, you know, I mean, sure. so it's a lot of tri- it's trial and error um, and just playing around with it. I mean, of course, I want them to know it's Sarasota, Florida, and then whatever topic I'm talking about, like the market inventory. I'm just trying to use like certain buzzwords that I feel like are trigger words that people are looking for. So not only putting in the t- the title has to be catchy, which is like, you know, you try to be in a creative space, title, the words in the description, and then the hashtags. It's like, it's a lot. 
So we're just, we're still trying to figure it all out because we don't have like, you know, I do have an SEO person that handles my website. So for the ad that we placed last week, he, I kind of let him take the reins on that because that's what I pay him to do. But outside of that, yeah, it's just shailing myself. <laughs> wow. And so, you know, definitely we know that YouTube has, has really, you know, kind of taken over in terms of uh, search results organically. But um, I know that you're doing a lot of Instagram too. So tell us about mm-hmm. your experience with um, um, uh, posting on Instagram. Yeah, I think the same thing goes there too. Like tr- not trying to just post like just listed, just so nobody cares. Like, you, you know, they want to get to know you. I find when I'm looking, I'm like when they post something that's like about their dogs or like their real life, not so like in a box like it's just more interesting so I try to keep it varied and you know we're still trying to I'm not I mean I'm not new to Instagram but I'm not like I haven't been on there forever so yeah that's just one more platform and then if I do post something I can choose to throw it onto my Facebook you know like that option and so I'll do that as well which where I do have a really sizable presence on Facebook because I've got my, um, you know, you can optimize your Facebook with having two different professional sites, which I do have as well as my personal. So, you know, again, it's like just mixing it up to keep it interesting. Sure. And are are you um, sharing the videos out through um, uh, LinkedIn also? Yes, we do. Yep. And are you getting results from that? I find it. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I've got about 5,000 some on LinkedIn and I didn't use LinkedIn for so long. And then I was like, maybe I should try to, you know, keep a presence on there and keep like my resume updated. And I like that because it keeps like all the things that you've done up, you know, as a historic like list. So that's nice. And it is strictly professional, which I like because some of these other ones, you know, there's a little gray there, you know, Sure. <laughs> but, sure. um, so yeah, LinkedIn's great too. And I find that, um, video, I feel like people like to see video. I don't know. So we're just trying to yep. give the people what they want, you know, right. <laughs> give the people what they want. I love it. I love it. Yes. And, um, I've noticed in our communications that you have the links to your videos and to your YouTube, uh, channel in your email signature but it's not mm-hmm. always the same. I've noticed that your email so, signature sometimes is different. Well, so we added the YouTube and the link and next to that I've changed it because I don't want it to sound salesy. So I, I put market updates on there, I think is what it says yep. now. And then if they want to access the MLS, they can click on the picture where my signature is. So I don't like it too cluttered. Hopefully it's not. And just to the point, but like they can access the information. Also, I want to mention too, they they can click on the website and like the YouTube videos automatically upload to the website. You can get everything on the website itself. Sure. sure. Kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. And you also mentioned that um, that you use a QR code in your monthly mailers um, to direct people to the videos. Tell us about that. Who's your audience for your monthly mailers and what kind of format do you use? Sure. We, so we maximize the space on the paper. So we just do, uh, two sides, uh, like a letterhead style and we try to make it like interesting. So it's not like all wording. So we've got like the new inventory and then we have like a recent review or something, and then just any cool market updates. And then I was like, oh my gosh, why don't we use these QR codes in the newsletter? So just the most fun, more interesting or the most viewed ones that I feel like might be apropos for the month. And and then it's more like visually appealing on the page too. It's not just like all words and everything. And then on the other side is like the uh, CMA uh, and then something interesting that happened on the island or whatever. So primarily we're targeting Longboat Key and a couple of places on the mainland that I just really want to be an expert in. So because I feel like smaller is better when it comes to real estate, like not being a jack of all trades. I don't know. You probably same way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, But uh, something that I, that I 
took away from what you were just talking about is you're paying attention to which of your videos are getting more traction, right? And I think that's super important that, that we think about uh, if you can identify those videos are get it, that are getting more views and uh, perhaps even more forwards and that sort of thing, to focus on sharing those again with your QR code in this other format, that I, I think that's pretty brilliant. And I think that's really smart to pay attention to which things um, are, are getting more attention. Um, any, any particular mm -hmm. theme of the ones that get more attention? You know, it's so weird. And Michelle and I talk about this and like, there's sometimes no rhyme or reason as to what video gets more. And it's a lot of trying to figure that out. And in listening to a lot of these podcasts, it's kind of not, I'm not the only one. So I don't know. I mean, what I would think was like, I didn't like, ew, I didn't like that video of me. And then that's the favorite. I'm just like, okay. So I, I, learning curve, no idea. <laughs> sure, sure. And so, you know, we talked about your, um, your, your video crew already, right? Um, and so I was going to ask you about uh, how much are you spending to produce all these videos? But what I'm hearing is maybe not so much. Not so much, Tammy. It's not, I mean, I pay Shayla that she gets a salary and then bonuses, right? That's just how it's been. And so it's no extra uh, unless I do something, I don't know, special. Like I did a, for a listing. Listings are a little different, right? So, but no, nothing extra. We're just doing it all from the phone. So at this point, nope. <laughs> wow. And so are you hiring a videographer for um, listing videos or are you handling that in-house as well? Oh my gosh, there's no way I would, I would never take photos or video myself of a listing. No chance. Now these videos are a different story because they're just, you know, content, putting it out there for the public. If I'm representing a seller, I'll always have professional photography, videography, Matterport, website, all of that. The whole nine years, we do not play around. And when the market changed, we ramped up our, our marketing. We did not do less like some people did we really ramped it up to make sure that people knew we were here we were marketing we were doing more than you know we were in the past maybe and so yes at, there is no way i would do a cell phone it, photo on a listing i see that sometimes it just blows my mind well you know, typically that would be the advice that i would give as well but um but you're you're in action videos really are super good. <laughs> so, um, so Thank I you. found myself asking, gosh, wow, are, are, are you guys doing that? But uh, I agree wholeheartedly that, um, that when we're representing properties uh, to do that. And I guess, I guess that's a big difference between um, the, gosh, the candid videos and the others. Like there's this whole threshold of, um, of, of what's acceptable, I guess. So let's talk you know, about that. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say to your point that, you know, there are certain clips that I was like, no, let's edit. And then I've gotten feedback to exactly address what you just said in that people want to know that you're not a robot, that you're, that you make mistakes. Now I'm not talking about like cussing and all that, you know, but if you miss up, it's okay. Like they know you're human. It's not, none of this is edited. Okay. I mean, it's edited like this, you know what I mean? Like the different segments, like we segment into the next topic or whatever, but like, there's no script because I find if I have a script, I just go off script anyway, <laughs> you know, and it's just keeping it real. Like, you know, your topic, like you do, you know, your mark, you know, your topic. So you should come across as confident unless I'm reading a bunch of stats that I have to remember. But other than that, just go off the cuff, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know very many people that can spout statistics um, uh, ad lib. So yeah, that's, that's probably a good, uh, um, a, a good thing. What do you spend typically when you hire somebody to do videography um, or photography for, um, uh, for your listings? And do you use different different vendors based on the price of the property? I tell you what. Okay. So I'm at Coa Banker. We are the global, the only global luxury office in, I believe the state of Florida. So with that, we have an incredible opportunity with, with what's called listing concierge. 
And there's four levels. There's silver, bronze, platinum, and gold. And depending on the property, I mean, and the price, maybe the area, whatever, you can select. You don't have to use that program, but I think it's such an incredible opportunity. I mean, there's so much involved with listing concierge. So they have, of course, the professional photography. And then there's just so many, like the TV ad, you get the postcards, of course, a lot of the standard stuff. But then it also goes into the Coa Banker owned View magazine that's distributed to 186 doors per month. And so it's like a whole laundry list of things that separate us from maybe another agent or another company that is just so much potential to add that reach for people that sellers want. I mean, reach is important now because sellers want multiple offers, right? So we sure. now we have this added pressure of the expectation of multiple offers. So it's like, you have to be, you know, out there. Got it. Got it. Um, and yeah. speaking of that multiple offer thing, are you seeing the same level of activity in, in terms of that kind of competitiveness in the, you know, above a million as you're seeing below? Um, well, like, for example, the the listing that I have, because, because of course, there's only six condos on the beach right at this moment on mm-hmm. Longboat Key sand side. So right now, I, I'm not expecting that. Now that's listed for 1.45. Right now, I don't expect that necessarily. But like on one that we have coming up under 800,000, we already have all these, these three virtual showings. I mean, that very well could be multiple offers. Uh, another case in point today, I did show a property for 689, a single family home on the mainland. Mm-hmm. She's already, ha- she already has one. O- okay. It's only been two days. She has one offer, two coming with an open house and all offers due Monday. So of course there's pressure and it's going to be multiple offers. So a single family home on the mainland is going to be different a little bit than the condos. I think it's maybe tapering off a little bit in some cases. I don't know. What are you seeing? Same? Yeah. So, so reasonably the same. Um, I will, I will tell you when you made that last comment, I thought about six months ago that I saw a tapering off and, um, uh, yeah, it uh, not it was so much. it would yeah not so much it was a blip, um, but as the price point goes up, so I'm seeing in the in the million to two million dollar price range, they're getting multiple offers and they're getting at least list price, um, mm-hmm. or in some cases a little bit more right. So right around between a million and a million five, particularly there is the same level of competition as I see below that, but when you get above two. Um, either it's going to go immediately to somebody who's just not going to play around and they make a full price cash offer with no contingencies, right? And the seller says, cool, done. Um, or if it doesn't sell right away, then, then you still can get it. I, I have a a client under contract that I successfully negotiated this week uh, with a 2.6 list price, and we were able to secure it for 2.5, um, again, with really nice terms and, and cash, Mm -hmm. but, um, but I do see a little difference when you when you move up in in price range. So it truly is, yeah. We actually had an interesting one come up. It was um, under six hundred thousand condo on Longboat. It was technically off market, so it was like one of those temporarily off. And my client, we both kind of noticed it on and off, and so then we. Where I was able to call the agent and she was like, yeah, they're still selling. It's just the tenant that's staying there is just really difficult, which is like shocking, you know, just kidding. Um, so we were able to secure that. It was a beautiful thing because I'm like, well, I mean, don't think that there could not still be multiple offers because she still had people in the wings. I mean, this is waterfront, anything facing the water on a barrier island chances are someone's going to be out looking at it in this market. And sure enough, there were, but we were able to secure it without an actual, you know, multiple offer situation. So it was, it was an awesome thing and something that I feel like we should tap into more. And I, I know I'm guilty of not tapping into that resource, that whole other maybe shadow inventory that's sitting there, you know, that people don't want to cold call or whatever the case may be. So that's, that's another idea for agents as well. 
I think that's a fantastic idea, thinking about those temporarily off the market, because you're right. Sometimes it's not that they've changed their mind. It's that they've got a, a situation. Maybe there's a family medical issue, or in some cases, they're just, they've are just they got people in from out of town and they don't want to show it. So those are really a, a good viable option, especially when inventory is so so constricted. Um, I think that's great. So I hope that uh, right. that some of our audience will uh, will actually take a look at that if they're struggling to find stuff in their in their market for uh, for right. their buyers. Right. Anything that works. Just uh, thinking outside the box here. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Do you have any goals for this year that maybe are different, right? Something that you've said, hey, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do more of this or less of this, or I'm gonna try this. Um, what's in store for the year ahead for you? Well, I've never been a fan of cold calling. I did a little bit of, that, of it last year and I tend to taper off. I'll get I'll be, you know, it's all good, it's it's not bad, and then I'll just taper off. I just never have liked it. I've never really gotten good business from it. That's just me personally. I know people that are really successful at like expires and fizzbos and stuff. It's that's just never been my jam. Um I'm gonna I just want to do things I enjoy to be honest with you after so many years in the business like yourself, you've kind of earned the right to that maybe at this point. So I don't if I don't enjoy it, my heart's not gonna be in it. And I think that's gonna show. And so doing less of the things that just I'm not loving like that. And of course, I've got the sales goal. I'd like to hit 40 million. That's my goal. And it's, you know, um, that and then just really building on the library of the YouTube page and just trying to bring forth great content for the public and just be relevant in that way and, and a resource, really. Um, Excellent. I think those are those are outstanding goals. And you're right. Um, you know, you and I are both uh, celebrating 20 years in the business this uh, this year, and uh, um, it it absolutely is a wonderful thing to to get to a place where you feel comfortable um, making decisions to do what you enjoy doing, and and not um, trying to be all things to all people. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, we really hope that um, uh, that the the kind of content that the institute's giving to our members with the training and with podcasts like this that that we're instilling that confidence in um, in our members and uh, those real estate professionals who um, who are embracing pushing up that price point to uh, work smarter and not harder and and really enjoy what they do. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. That is my that is my line. Work smart, not hard. As and to that point, we already we started doing every other Friday off so that Shayla would have off and then I would so we would switch back and forth. And I find that we just are more productive during those days. We try to fit more in and we're exhausted. But then we have like a full day. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work like that because you know the people need us. Sure, <laughs> but you know that is nice, and that's been a nice change. And just trying to to live to work, not live to work, work to live, right? And um, taking those breaks have I, I feel like for us has been really good. Excellent. Well, I haven't yet reached the um, uh, the point where I take a concentrated <laughs> day off yet, but um, oh, uh, Tammy, it, come it, on. <laughs> it, it sounds like a good goal. It sounds like a really good goal, and and that's you actually time off. It's a it's a it's a really nice point that you made though that that the two of you switch, right? So so you don't feel like you're leaving your clients in the lurch, um, but but you're you're really giving each other permission to take that day. I, I like that concept. Right. And we we're open to growing. I, I'm I, I'm a fan of the high quality versus quantity. So that's why I've been deliberately slower in growing a team, I guess. It's really got to be the right fit for both of us. And I'm not opposed to that. I actually welcome that if anyone's listening, uh, you know, because I feel like having more minds than one is good. And it just going to help our clients in the long run. And, you know, when I'm not able to meet with someone, maybe the next person would. And so I'm definitely open to the team in the future, if this year, next year, whatever that I think that's maybe the natural progression of things, hopefully. So we'll see. Excellent. Excellent. 
Well, <laughs> Uh, I am so appreciative, as I'm sure that all of our audiences that you have uh, shared your time with us, and uh, I look forward to interacting with you. I know we've had the the, the pleasure to uh, have our paths cross now and again, mm-hmm. um, and I look forward to more of that in the future. And um, and so we will uh, call it a day and uh, and get back to our sunshine in Florida. I love it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I appreciate talking to you. So glad to have you. 